get a thought, get a word I want to share with sure and be a blood blessing to others. So look, um, as you see in the header, I talked about um, solving the identity crisis. Identity. Where does identity start? Uh, identity starts with God, right? It, it, it all starts to get with God. So he's the or originator, um, assigner, and implementer of identity. So whenever we move from the originator, assigner of identity, we'll have a crisis. So I'm dealing with men um, because I feel men, if we get back in our rightful place, not feel, I know, if we get back in our rightful place, um, there'll be blessings um, to be had in our families, with our kids, our wives, um, in our communities, um, in our nation or nations. Um, because God is a universal God. God is not contained by our family or our nationality or our race. Um, all of those are small things that um, we, unfortunately, as human beings, um, in our macro or micro perspective, we, we, we are subject to because we see what we see and hear what we hear. But if we see in the spirit um, realm through God's eyes, we see how expansive um, God see things. So it's not limited to our time, our space, and our matter. Um, but God is a God that's much bigger than um, our mindset. Um, so unfortunately, how we look at things sometimes, we look at our situations and we look at um, what we're going through, what we're dealing with, what's going on in our community, what's going on in our family, what's going on in our nation. And we have a, a, ma a micro perspective. And when we often have a micro perspective, that can cause limitations and often problems um, when we don't see beyond what we see. OK, but in order for us to see beyond what we see, we got to see things how God sees it and um, through his sovereign will and his his, his mind that that will come through prayer that will come through reading his word. But um, back to what I was saying, I was talking about identity. Um, we have an identity crisis all through our society, and that's a multifaceted thing. Um, when when I talk about identity crisis, um, it begins with who you are and whose you are. And if we are not subject or allowing ourselves to be um, defined by who defined us, who is God, who created us, we're always going to have a crisis because we'll be operating outside of our function and outside of our place. So, and whenever we op operate outside our function or outside our place, we're subject to um, that uncovering or that dysfunction, right? So if God is not the author of confusion, we got to go back to what is bringing forth so much confusion. We got to go back to what is causing so much confusion. So if God is not the author of confusion, it begs us to ask what is causing so much confusion. So I'm going back to identity because God always throughout scripture, he always talks about being, doing, and then having. But that starts with identity. So we got to know who we are and whose we are, guys. Who we are and whose we are. So I'm talking about biblical manhood, right? So God told us to um, be fruitful, do multiply, and you'll have dominion. So if we're seeing so much going on in our culture, in our world, we got to ask ourselves, are we being who God asks us to be? Are we doing what God asks us to do? And are we having what God asks us uh, or desires for us to have? So that goes back to identity. So if we identify with the wrong thing, we're going to do the wrong thing or we're going to be the wrong thing. Then we're going to do the wrong thing and we're going to have the wrong thing. Right? So if we look at societal ills, 
whether it's poverty, relationship issues, um, crime, um, conflict, that goes back to us stop being who God told us to be or asked us to be, um, assigned us to be, and we are not doing what God asks us to do. So therefore we're reaping the consequences of that and we're multiplying that which um, God didn't originally for us to design to multiply, right? So we're seeing a multiplication um, of things that's outside of God designed because we didn't start with being who God asks us to be. And then we're out doing things God didn't want us to do. And now we're having things in our society that we don't, we don't want as a consequence of, of not being what God wants want us to be and not doing what God wants to do. But now we're reaping the consequences of the multiplication of not being the multiplication of doing the wrong thing. Now we have it what we don't want to have. So it goes back to identity. So men, I'm saying this with men because God placed man here first. He, he created man to be, um, to have dominion over this earth. He created man to have dominion. You know, he, he, he gave him an assignment. He gave him a job. And then, and then, then of course, uh, he created Eve to come alongside him, to partner with him, to fulfill God's assignment here on earth. You hear what I said? He created man to operate and function in his purpose, for his purpose, in his place. So he gave man an awesome job to reign in this earth realm. He gave him an assignment. So he was assigned to do an assignment. But God had, Adam had to operate in that assignment in order to do that assignment to benefit from that which the original assignment was designed for him to benefit from. So it started with identity. So Adam had to knew who he was, whose he was, operate in God's uh, order and God, operate in God's purpose in order for him to benefit from that which God gave him. So Adam went around naming all these animals. Animals wasn't biting them. Lions wasn't biting them. And he was operating in this beauty, this paradise, right? You know, he, he, he created this beautiful creature, Eve, for him to work alongside him. So th there was no conflict. So there was no conflict between the sexes. Right? So we got to ask ourselves, when did death, conflict, um, you know, uh, um, pain, when did all that come about? It came about when Adam got out of place and started listening to the wrong voice. It all came when Adam stopped being who God said for him to be, stopped listening to God's authority. He stopped doing what God said to do. And he ended up multiplying that which God didn't originally want us to multiply. So he started listening to the wrong voice. Men, if we get back in the position of biblical manhood, and we're not talking about this uh, authoritarian, toxic, what society want to call toxic masculinity. We're not talking about that because biblical manhood ain't toxic, toxic. Biblical manhood is going to cause us to operate under God's authority. And we're going to start treating everything uh, how God wants us to treat it. That including our women. That's including our women. Will we always be perfect? No, because we'll start looking at women. We'll start looking at our children as God's, creation God's blessing and we'll start treating it and them as a blessing we'll start covering them as God blessing we'll start nurturing them as God blessing we'll start viewing them as God blessing and guess what we'll be blessed so men I, my beg my ask of you let's get back to 
being who God asked us to be. Let's start doing what God asked us to do. And let's start multiplying that which God asks us to multiply. So when we stop being, we leave some things uncovered. We'll leave our wives uncovered. We'll leave our kids uncovered. Hence, why do we see crime everywhere? Our kids are running outside of authority. Kids are running outside of authority. Everywhere. Crime. Everywhere. Crime. Everywhere. Everywhere. Because we stop having dominion. So when we gave, when we stopped operating under God's authority, then we produced, we multiplied um, a generation or kids or our offsprings that refused to operate under authority either as well. So we're reaping the consequences of a people that refused to operate under authority because we chose not to operate on authority. So if we say, you know what? I'm not going to operate on the guy's authority. I'm going to believe what I believe. I'm going to do what I want to do. And then how do we expect our, how we expect to have benefits in a society? <laughs> how we expect to not have lawlessness? When we refuse to operate on the God's law. How do we respect to have love when, when, when true love is obedience to God? True love is obedience to God. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if we refuse as adults to operate on our authority and say, you know, what? I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to be what I want to be. I want to see things how I want to see it. You know what, God? No, God, you're not going to have authority in my life. I'm going to have authority. So we leave our kids uncovered. And if we're subject to do what we want to do, how we expect, why do we ask why kids are doing what they want to do? So why do we think that there's so much lawlessness? Because they seen us operating under no law. They've seen us operating under no authority. So, men, let's get back to operating under authority so we can get our families covered and protected and operating under God's blessings and not reaping the consequences of a curse as a result of our disobedience to God. So, biblical manhood will always produce life, prosperity, Blessings, peace, harmony, clarity. Is everything going to be perfect? No. But guess what? We are more likely to have benefit, to have positive um, things happen for us in our lives, in our society, in our culture, in our families. If we're operating under authority and there, therefore we can start uh, controlling some of these things that are out of control that are in our culture. But it becomes begins with us men. <laughs> it becomes with us with men. Once we move out of place, we will leave Satan. Uh, uh, we will give Satan free reign in our culture because Satan didn't have reign down here. God gave us authority. We gave up that reign when we, we disobey God and stop listening to God. We start listening to the wrong voice. So we gave we gave authority in this earth realm to Satan. We gave authority. So none of this stuff would have happened if we stayed in our place. None of this stuff. Crime, dissension, you know, the battle of the sexes, you know, women against men, all this stuff that you see, that's of Satan. Ain't of God. Because it was perfect harmony between that man and that woman. So whenever you see dysfunction, disorder, confusion, lack of identity, don't know who you are, what you are, that ain't come from God. That's of Satan. That's and it's because man stepped out of place. He stepped out of place. So if we get back under God's authority, we can start bringing some other things under authority and get our position back. And once we get our position back, men, our women a benefit, our children a benefit, our society a benefit, but nothing will come under control unless we come under God's authority. I don't care what we law you try to pass. 
I don't care what the government does. I don't care what all that has its place. I don't care none of that. Because no matter what we try to do outside of God's authority, it'll be frustrated. It might have temporary, temporary benefit. But it will not have long term benefit because any efforts that's initiated trying to bring forth a solution outside of God's will, you will not have long term benefits. So that's why we see things keep happening in our society over and over again. That's outside of God's will and not even um that's not to our benefit or not to our will is because we refuse to get back on the God's will and God's protection. Okay. So my ask men is let's examine our hearts. Let's examine our hearts. Let's look back to God's word for instructions. Let's seek um, orders from headquarters. Once we seek orders from headquarters and start bowing ourselves before God, we can start um, writing some of the things wrong that are in our society. But it's biblical manhood, guys. It's biblical manhood. And mom, dad, once we start getting back under God's authority, we can start bringing our kids back under authority and we can start shifting some of this stuff around in our culture. But we can't do it outside of God. Why would we want to? Why would we want to do it outside of God? So my ask, men, let's get back in our biblical place. Get back in the word. Start seeking orders from headquarters. And start taking those orders from headquarters, bringing it back down in this earth realm. And let's start operating in the design and function that God designed for us to be in. And guess what's going to happen? We will be blessed. Our families will be blessed. Our communities will be blessed. Our nation will be blessed. Let's thank Blake Rigger. God just ain't a nation guy. God's the God of this whole world. Our world be blessed. But we got to get back under authority. So we can start subject, subjugating some of these things that um, are illegitimate in this world, okay? But we got to get back in our place, men. We got to get back in our place. Who did God say you are? And start operating that way. Hey, be blessed. Love you guys. And y'all have awesome.